Welcome everyone to the first episode of Unlocked. I am your host, Lockshot, and with me today I have Slate Senpai and Edible Venus, aka known as Ryan. For those of you who do not know Slate and Ryan, Slate is also a VTuber and a Twitch streamer. Ryan is our resident goofball and one of our stream VIPs. I will let Slate introduce himself first. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello everyone, my name is Slate Senpai. I typically go by Slate. I am a VTuber and I play a lot of Valorant. Or at least I used to. But yeah, that's that's me. And Ryan? Hi y'all, my name is Ryan. Uh, I won't dox my last name on first stream, we'll save that for second. I've been playing with Locke for probably a bit long time and I'm excited to be here and see where it goes. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, um, our first dream topic for today is how we met. You want me to lead off in my section or what? Yeah, you can lead. I think you, right. you and me met first before. Uh, oh yeah, no, definitely anything. before Slate. So I, uh, I here's some here's some more doxing for myself. I went to UNT for a long time before the pandemic, and I actually a bit of a pool shark myself. Mind if I say it? So I was actually playing pool for a couple of days, and this weird guy comes up to me in all black, as one might imagine, straight from his VTuber. And, uh, well, we just start hitting off, talking. I won't doss his name yet, and it'll get there eventually. But we just kind of hit it off, became good friends, and it actually led to where it is now. I'd hang out with him. Just I, don't, I think I remember that story backwards. Aren't you the extra? Didn't you walk up to oh. me? Oh, okay. Well, listen, listen, listen. I'm trying to give you a good light here, buddy. Yeah, man. <laughs> I absolutely adopted you and said you're playing, so have fun. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, Breezy. Listen, I have a nice side. I sat around those pool tables for, like, I think about, like, two weeks before somebody was, like... You really did. Yeah. I was, like, watching people and just observing and just learning, like, how to play. And somebody's, like... And then I went, hi, just get what on are you it. doing just sitting there? Come, you play now. Yeah. You were so shocked. Y'all were just, like, just get on the table. I was just, like... You just hop on the table, uh, or we put you on the table. Yeah, for reals. Have fun. And then, like, oh my god, that guy Darian. <laughs> How does you? Okay, your parents give you. Uh, uh, okay, say your parents give you a thousand dollars a month, right? There's so many better things that you can be doing with that money other than gambling on a pool table when you're just not good at playing hey, pool. Listen, his donations were always appreciated. Okay. I don't know if they're donations or if he just wasn't mentally there listen, listen. exactly he so basically no what did, what did i do with all his money i bought food and more pool equipment it's, that's the chat's just, just like buying a lot of fast food but here's the thing he basically fed the entire syndicate every time that he put money on the table oh my god it's so true whenever I, people he, didn't have money they would save five dollars just to play against them just to take his money so they can buy food for the week god. Oof. It's pretty rough. I enjoyed the times though, but oh, uh, they were fun. Jeez. Uh, Bullying is so bad that uh, now now the bullies are getting commissioned to bully people. <laughs> yeah, for reals. Hey, listen. What they say, love what you do, okay? And oh boy, did I love what I did. <laughs> yeah. It's really nice when you didn't have to work a job for your freshman or sophomore year in college. And that's all you had to do. No, for reals though. <laughs> Not commissioned bullying. <laughs> Slate, uh, Slate met Ryan through me one day. I think it was like, it was after semester ended, right? We came in and uh, we just like, I guess we just had oh, to get yeah. together. I think it was during like the last two weeks when pretty much I was already done with call, uh, with I was done with finals since I chose to take all my early ones. Gotcha. And then I believe Slate came in and just hung out. I know he was playing poker for the first bit of it. That little offshoot, uh, that offshoot of the ring that we had when people played poker on the side. You know, I'm gonna be real, I'm gonna be real, I was playing a card game, I don't remember what card game we were playing, though. It, I, I don't know, all I know is the way we avoided any campus security is basically we played with every inanimate object in the book. It was yeah. great, we had spoons, we had napkins, it, it was just, it looked horrendous. But hey, I mean, it, it had fun, and you know, everything had a value. I had fun with it. But yeah, I mean, then what do we do after that? We played Tekken or was it Smash? One of the two. We had both. I think we had Tekken and Smash, but uh, jeez. Uh, no. Just like thinking about back to like when I met you and when I met the friend group too, like 
You remember me buying? I, mean, I spent more on Starbucks than I did on my books. Minute. Oh my gosh! Don't start with me. I just drag me and go. Hey, you're ordering for me. I'm like, all right, whatever. As long as I get something out of this. No, for real, dude. And then like the he just has a. Is, me and him are exactly the same way when ordering Starbucks. Like we bring somebody to order Starbucks for it's, us. It's and it's literally what happened. He Starbucks would go around. buy my bribery of like chicken tenders. I'm, was not it did not take much for me. Bought me a box of chicken tenders and walked me over to Starbucks and I'd order there as well. So. No, but Ryan just has a way of conversating with people that he just gets free stuff thrown at him. You know what? Hey, That's why I bring Ryan. It's a good lifestyle. It is a good lifestyle. It's my favorite lifestyle. <laughs> Ryan's that one guy that just makes friends with everyone and they love him, so they're just like, here, have extra. It's like, hey, come back. Say hi. No, Don't no. be a stranger. No, I could talk to a brick wall if I could learn to talk back. Well, hell, it doesn't even have to talk back. Let's not talk to uh, my brick wall. It's just there for. No, uh... it's, it's pretty illuminating. And no, I like bro. <laughs> Leave my brick wall alone, dude. It's a nice, pretty red, all right? Just don't, all right. don't, don't mess with my brick wall, bro. Uh, all right. I guess I'll leave your brick wall alone. For yeah. now. So let's get a little bit into uh, into our intros for what each of us does for uh, for jobs or what we've done in the past for jobs too. Um, I'll let Slate start, actually. So, I'm gonna start off with the most awkward thing here. I am currently unemployed, but previously I used to work, uh, retail, banking, and fast food. And I want to say my favorite out of all of those, obviously, was the banking. The banking was fun. I just liked talking to several, several people. I'd get to, like, close to 100 people in one day that I've talked to for about two minutes, and their life stories were so interesting in those two minutes. Pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty great. Mm -hmm. I'd like to consider, honestly, I'd like to consider streaming a job, to be honest, even though, like, you know, it might not bring the, the most amount of revenue right now. You know, it's still kind of a part-time, still kind of brings in some kind of money, so I, I want to say that streaming is one, too. Um, at least, you know, while you're not, you know, it, it's not like a primary occupation at the moment, but it still, you know, has value, especially because I haven't worked any other jobs. Um, so it's like the only thing that I've particularly made money from. Um, yeah. other than that, you know, just a lot of music for me. If it wasn't for the fact that I had a, a job previously where that forced me to talk on a daily basis like this. I probably wouldn't have dove into streaming as quickly as you guys did. For me, the opposite. Like, I was very quiet, though, in high school. And so when I started streaming, um, you know, it was, I guess it was a little bit of a challenge to start talking. But at the same time, like, playing video games was kind of the main focus of, hey, like, I can do something I want and not feel like I'm stuck behind, like, a chair in an office job or something that's going to, like, piss me off or I'm just not going to be able to conversate with people very well because I have anxiety. So it's, like, hard to talk to people. And, and streaming is just like an open door for me to be able to like do something I guess I'm passionate about and I just didn't feel stressed doing. Nice little take on it. So what I have previously done, I have been bartending now for almost seven years now. That was pretty much one of my starting jobs and something I always just stuck to because, listen, I am an alcoholic by trade and by choice and... Well, let, let's just say I make a living loving what I do. Then I come back at night, help out my boy Locke, stream with him occasionally. And now I'm starting to hang out with Slate more as well, so. It's a fun little run that I have. In my mind, you said I make a living loving what I do, and I flipped it around to I make a loving living what I do. And I was like, you know, that works either way. <laughs> that works either way. It's about accurate. That is a very true topic, but no. It's over here I like, have... I make drinks and then I drink them. I make drinks and then I drink them. <laughs> you know what? I need to start a bar that that's the main premise. Yeah, for real. I need you to come in, buy my drink, watch me drink it, and you guys have a nice day. Cheers. I'm just gonna stare at you, yeah. Are they gonna pay you to drink the drink you made for yourself? <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah, the, the dream. <laughs> yeah, premium primetime entertainment right there. I'll tell you how it tastes too. To watch that, if his mouth unhinged while he did that. 
Just a nice little python, just lock the jaw down and just chug the drink in a second and slam it down on the counter. Yeah, I want to like see Ryan Muppet and like his mouth just unhinges <laughs> and the alcohol's not even going into his mouth. It's just going everywhere else. It just goes down. Hell, if this gets popular enough, I'll do a fun little skit with that. I will absolutely just skit that. That Jeez. sounds fun as hell. You just hear him in the background, just glug, 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 glug. <laughs> Everyone's got their hobbies. Yeah. <laughs> hobbies. Speaking of hobbies, <laughs> what is everyone's uh, favorite game? Some oh. nice stuff to do. Are we talking about of all time or current? Oh, that's the hard part here. Ooh, well, why not both? All right. So all time, I gotta say it was Halo Reach for me. That was a game that I have ungodly amounts of hours on there. Like, every day after school, and I was in high, middle school and just up to high school, I would be playing that from when I got home at 4 till, you know, almost 2 in the morning. And that that was, like, my favorite activity. I had a group of, like, 20 guys we'd play with. Then every Friday and Saturday night, it was just, it was, it was just chaos. It was so much fun. I just prison break, prison riots, everything. Those were two just fun games: cops and robbers, duck hunt. If anyone knows what that one is, I'm mad about duck so hunt. Many... Don't even get me started oh. on duck hunt right now. Oh, I love duck. We hunt. okay. Oh we we God. don't sell our consoles. And the one time that my mom grad sold a console, it was duck hunt, and we were so upset about it. She's never sold a console again. But like, I can I have the game cartridge for duck hunt. I have neither the console nor any of the wires nor the guns. So I just have, like, the duck hunt con cartridge, and that's it. I was so is, upset about it. The funny part is, it's not like she got rid of one console. We had three uh, Super NESs, the ones with the little flaps, and she got rid of the whole set, like, everything that came with it. And it wasn't just, like, one gun. It was multiple guns, because we had b them both in gray and in, uh, orange. in the, orange. the orange ones. Such a good so, game. Like, yeah, we 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 lost a lot that day, and it was just one console. And I was just like, you know, she could have gotten rid of like multiple different consoles. The fact that she just got rid of that one same one, we got off lucky. I think I just... Duck Hunt and and what is it? The Cabela shooting game with like the gun on the PS4 or PS3, mm -hmm. whatever one it is. That's where my love of FPS probably came from. <laughs> uh, I gotta say, I gotta take it back further, real quick. So I don't know if you you remember this, but this was something that my parents were okay with before Call of Duty and everything. It was a Nerf Blaster series on the Wii. It was a game completely sponsored by Nerf. You had like a cart, like you had a cart, like a little actual Nerf gun with a slot that you'd put in the Wii remote, and it had like buttons on it. You'd press the button, it would reload. You press the side button, it had a secondary fire. Oh my gosh, that was probably the most fun I had as a kid. I'd be jumping up and down the table, diving over it like an idiot. Oh gosh, I still have a bad wrist. I might have to go to my kid. local gaming store and... Uh, oh, I hope we can find and, that. And fish it out. <laughs> oh my god, I'll show you the move, that's why I have a messed up left wrist. Oh, yeah. uh, camera still does that, absolutely. It's funny enough, I still have it upstairs. Probably, yeah. actually. Oh, that's too funny. But I think yeah, that, that was a fun one for me. Yeah. No, we'll definitely have to go look for that one. We, we could probably find it in the game exchange. Um, I, I think uh, for me, my. I don't know. They, both answers might be the same for me, but my current favorite game is Valorant. Um, if I had to exclude Valorant from my all time favorite game, it'd probably be like maybe Tekken or something. Oh, we gotta respect it. So where does your love of Tekken come from? What did you play the original, like you know, the actual uh, what's it called um, arcade machine been... Tekken and everything as well, or no? We've been playing Tekken since before I can remember. It would that'd be more of a slate question if he remembers uh, what machines yeah, that we think, played on. I think where he started was Tekken Three, because Tekken Three was the most readily accessible yeah. arcade machine that we had. Like that was everybody always gets Tekken Three. It's like the first one that had hit hit the arcades. And I don't know why it was the one everyone fixated on, but that was just the one that everyone wanted. Then after that, we started progressing through, like, the consoles of whatever consoles we bought. 
And I think the one we played the most was Tekken 6. Yeah, I definitely know. We poured too many hours into that game. Yeah, <laughs> way too many hours. All right, so now... Except Black here's... Ops 2 ain't on the list. So so here's my tangent about Black Ops before we Oof. get back to what we're talking about. I was going to um, go back to World at War, but I'll let you finish that first. Yeah, we weren't allowed to play COD um, as kids. And so I really never played any COD games. Um, I think we maybe had one on the house for PS2, say... but like that wasn't ours. So you were you were the one that was excluded from playing COD. Like neither one of them cared if I played COD. Really? Yeah. Why was I excluded? I don't I don't know. You, I think it was just because you were young and impressionable. But yeah, they just genuinely didn't care if I played COD at all. So we had COD on PC, and I also had the COD. I still have the COD CD for PS2. Yeah. Well, like, I just yeah, never I, FPS games, so I never got any more of them. Yeah. I I wasn't basically allowed to play. So. I never got into FPS until I got into Overwatch. I think that was my first actual FPS. I can't remember. No, no, no Halo. We played Halo oh. in yeah, 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 Halo in uh, on the computers in high school. You know, everyone always had that like flash drive that you pass around the classroom and everyone does oh, land. Yeah, those were yeah. Awesome. Halo definitely had my first FPS. Now I will say my first FPS was Call of Duty Three, like the original storming D Day, the entire back to back series. And then I went to World at War, and I'm not going to lie, the fear as a kid, finishing the mission, and then the entire screen blacking out, you're waking up, you're just, you're sitting back, and you're like, what is happening? And all you hear are these groans, and moans, and screeches. I, I was terrified at like 10 or 11 years old, and I loved it. Then that carried on to Black Ops 1 and 2, and I didn't even really care about the PvP that much. I was all there for zombies. I mean, I don't think there's an Easter egg to this day. Well, I can't say to this day. Past uh, Black Ops 3, there hasn't been an Easter egg I haven't completed or have tried to complete, so... Going back to your screen yeah, blackout, bro, do you remember yeah. when I was playing Batman and the screen blacked out and we actually had a power outage in the community? And the sky turned gray. Did you did you not yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah. And okay, so basically, let me set the scene for everyone that's uh, listening. So basically, the, the there's a storm outside. Um, literally, like not not in the game, but like literally outside IRL. Um, there's a storm outside. The sky is gray. Um, I'm playing Batman. I don't remember if it's Arkham Asylum or which one that has. Um, who's that guy that uh, Scarecrow? Um, that kind of screws with Batman's mind. And um, we hit a Scarecrow moment. But at the same time that we had a scarecrow moment, and um, like you see the TV in the game blackout, um, we had an actual blackout in our community. <laughs> um, so everything just goes off and comes back on. So my PlayStation reset, and I get back into the game, but it continued the scarecrow moment from the moment I left off. And so I just see Batman in a whole bunch of like prison cells. Um, and then I just hear my dad running around outside, and everyone freaking out because uh, they're just like, the power went out in the entire community, blah, blah, et cetera, this and that. I was like, my game didn't do that, did it? It's like, I didn't just do that. Yeah, the Jumanji level fear of like, what yeah, no, that was, happened? Yeah, it was like next level fear. We were like, what the <laughs> fuck, bro? It was the most weird thing to ever, and I was sitting right next to him because he was playing the game. I refused to play the game. I just wanted to see it for the cutscene because I was just like, I'm not going to invest coordination yeah. into this. <laughs> And the fact that the PlayStation just had enough electricity to keep going during the power outage, but like conserved enough energy by having that black screen moment inside the cutscene, probably saved the PlayStation to where it can continue when the power went back on like two seconds later. That shocked the living daylights out of me. That is I was like awesome. freaking out right there with him because it wasn't just like oh, the cutscene happened and then, like, it ended. It was like, we went from a dramatic moment to the cutscene ending to Batman in jail talking directly to the camera as if he's talking to the player, which made it even freakier. That is wicked. It was nuts. I was losing my shit, bro. <laughs> I can only imagine, dude. That's Honestly, like, that crazy. moment, if I had to, like, say, like, I had, a, like, my most favorite, like, moment in a video game, it had to be that. Mm -hmm. it's not even uh, like when i drop an ace in valorant or like when i do something ridiculously cool or anything like, it's just that that one moment is just no. probably my best gaming experience ever and it wasn't even intentional it, but mine had to be had to be game night 
like one of the last game nights I remember. Because everyone's got that giant story of the last time their friends were online, and this was kind of one of mine. It's like ending years of like senior year for uh, for high school. And everyone's starting to know, hey, I'm going to this college, I'm going to that college, and everyone's setting in, but everyone's still chilling, you know, we're done, we're, we're seniors. <laughs> our, our uh, whatever it's called, our GPAs are already locked, we're done, we did not care about final exams, because most of us didn't have any at all to begin with. So we are literally staying up, probably till like 5 or 6 in the morning, just playing Halo, screaming at each other, getting yelled at by my family just untold fun and it just hits different when you know when you look back and go wow that was one of the true last times i have had just that much innocence that much fun as a kid and i was like oh that was wicked to me yeah no you love to hear that though i think that's like all time yeah our senior year like i don't think really much happened um other than you know just like we got let out like the first the last day of school they were just like oh yeah like literally just like sign in the gym go home all i remember from my last few days of high school was getting free stuff from other people because they were just like hey slate's an artist we should get rid of all of our art <laughs> stuff we were forced to buy throughout the school year uh, to him that's funny and then i went home i think the last good memory i had was drinking the last uh I'm not going to say the name of the coffee shop, but the last coffee from unnamed coffee shop that was inside of my high school. <laughs> I love that coffee shop. And the problem is missing, like almost missing the bus because oh. that coffee was that amazing. It was like a frappuccino, like oh, it was freaking weird. good. No, the only problem is that like that coffee shop doesn't exist down here. It, that, that's the only one place that exists. And otherwise, like you have to go to the north. And it irritates me because I can no longer have a good cup of that coffee anymore. Uh, well, even yeah. even in the north, that company did so poorly. There's only two other locations. One is inside of a call really? center, and the other one is inside of a college. Bro, no way. I thought they were. I thought they had more of them still. No, they only have two locations. That is or, well, such locations. a letdown because their coffee's so good. I probably doxed us already by saying that, but yeah, I don't there, care. There's two locations. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Oh no, you know where I went to high school, like, big uh, deal. <laughs> uh, first tier three sub in the chat, I'll dox, uh, your, uh, I'll dox Locke's actual location. <laughs> no, you won't. What? <laughs> yeah, I, right. I, fast, fast forwarding to, to current day games, um, w the reason why I'm such a big fan of Valorant, I guess now, as opposed to other FPS games, one, I just love Riot. Uh, I've loved Riot since League of Legends. League of Legends got me through a lot of my hard times. Um, even though it's a toxic game, like it gave me something to focus on. That wasn't whatever situations I was going through. So when they were releasing an FPS game, I was kind of curious to see how it would turn out. Um, and the fact that it has mechanics similar to CS:GO, where like you have to stop to shoot, and everything's so like accurate and and aim based, and you can't just like run and gun or just do stupid shit. Like that for me kind of solidified um, a lot of my one want to get will to get good at Valorant because I felt like it was an actual skillful game um, but like two like it just made it a lot more calm to know that like you know it's one tap or get one tapped and like if they just have faster reaction time than me then that's just what it is and I can continue to like train my reaction time to get faster I'm gonna hit a limit but like it's more of a tactical shooter than a skill based shooter because it's in the name that like once you like max out on your aim like it is now a team game and once you get to higher elo so like just that comfort of knowing like there's nothing i can do sometimes rather than playing a game where there's always something i could have done better i i prefer valorant a lot more i mean of course there's something i could do better in valorant all the time like different strategies but that, that comes from like a team uh, place rather than a than an individual base where it's just like i know that i know that i know that i've maxed out on my mechanics rather than a I can always do better with my mechanics. You know what I mean? Uh, well, I mean, to be fair, as we know, I mean, I'm on my just beginning journey because you're starting to drag me through it mostly. And we're starting off and my aim is getting better, but I'm lucky my my actual sense of strategy doesn't actually completely suck. Just, uh, Unlike a lot of people that I've met, especially starting at Valorant, you have a decent grasp on the game already. It's just like improving your mechanics is a day-to-day -day thing. 
Like you can at least like I know that you have some game sense and that you can see the game that you know what's happening in the game. But there's been iron players that I've played with that just like they have no idea what's going on from like an outside level and it's like it's hard to get them to the place where like you can start working with them to try to help them improve. Yeah, that that's awesome. Well, I appreciate the high praise. Mr. Platt, soon to be Ultra Diamond, Mythic Top 500, whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I hope. <laughs> oh, that's... that's too fun. But currently, probably favorite game, I don't know. I, I, wanted, I wanted with all my heart to probably say Halo. But right now, it is sadly a very big letdown, and it it, it shattered my heart. My my favorite game comes from uh, way back when on the Nintendo sixty four. I want to say it was Pokemon Stadium, just because I felt like it had a good blend of like you can play solo by yourself and just Pokemon battle and RPG all day, or you could uh, switch over to the party games, and if anyone's around you, you can switch to the whole. Okay, now let's play a party game aspect with friends, and it was it was very very good, good design, good game. But I want to say the reason I love that game is because when I was a, like really really young, we had a really good dad, and he like played a lot with us. He didn't he didn't hold back at all destroying me in that game. Like he was just using one Pokemon, one Pokemon only, and one shotting me with everything. Uh, I got a fun similar story. This was back when I first started visiting fa family and friends in Chicago. I would have been probably around 14, never really touched a racing game, and my uncle would whoop my ass so badly in Mario Kart to the point where he would stop stationary for 45 seconds at the beginning of the map and still would probably get close to lapping me, and it was just. It was insane. Like not only was he both just good at the game, but I sucked. <sighs> yeah, so I thinking fun. thinking back on it as a kid, like I just had like something that just came to my mind. But um, if I had to like exclude you know Tekken from favorite game, I think my favorite game would actually be Shadow the Hedgehog. And the reason I say this is, I remember uh, fighting with the bro over this, over yeah. wanting to play the PlayStation. And I didn't want to return the game um, because we got it. We rented it from Blockbuster for a week, and I was pulling on the um, the disc tray. Um, and so what ended up happening was the PlayStation sucked the disc tray back up, and it got stuck, and we couldn't get the game out of the disc tray. And my dad had to buy it, and my dad was so mm -hmm. mad. Um, but then we kept the game. But I had to get a new piece too because it was broken. Yeah. And I think it only made it worse when I tried to fix it and then had to force the disc tray back in and it literally pulled on the circuit board on one oh of the ribbons gosh. that was in the circuit board. And the ribbon that it pulled on was the most critically important ribbon, which was the one that connects to the camera eye that reads the CD. And I was just like, oh, well, this is going to be a nightmare to replace. Yep. At that point, I think we just had to get a brand new one. There's yeah, no but point we didn't anymore. Get a brand new one for like what two years? Yeah, it was a while. Yeah, I think we just went back to N sixty four and just started playing Smash Bros again. We were like, "Fuck it." I can understand where you're coming from. Suck. All right, so this is the million dollar question: What was the first console that you had ever got? I'm gonna let you guys start because you're much younger than me, so it's gonna be like current events with you guys. <laughs> you see, for me, like. I'm not going to remember because honestly we've had consoles in the house for for like longer than I would remember so you would know what my first console was more than I would know what my first console was. They would be whatever you handed me. first personal console was probably a Game Boy SP. Okay. Yeah, you're probably right on that one. I forgot about the SP. I'm still looking for it too. It was like a silver it. Game Boy SP that was your first console. Because mm -hmm. other than that, you'd have to borrow like extra Game Boys that I had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I will say I know my first console or it was a handheld and it was the Game Boy Color. And it was the limited edition like 
tealish blue, clear as so you could see every piece of the circuitry. And we had the light on it. We had the attachments so you could have the light so you could play at night. It was so cool. I got in so much trouble as a kid. Because I would just sneak off and be playing. I don't even remember what the games I had on it, but I would be playing those until whatever. I was never supposed to. I have always been a fun night owl when it comes to that. See, with me, I, I inherited a lot of consoles at a really young age. I want to say like about four or five. Yeah. And those consoles I inherited from like family's cousins or whatever, not they they were like Nintendo's, like the Super Nintendo, the NES, but yeah, you know, and the Game Boy Black and White. The first personal uh, console I remember I got, like that was for me specifically, mm -hmm. was the like special edition yellow yellow version Pikachu Game Boy <gasps> Color, and I oh. love the pieces. Because it I came know, with like the full little satchel and stuff. It looked like a man purse. Dude, but it I had was... like a little man purse with like a Pikachu Game Boy inside of it, and then all the Pokemon games. And I was just playing that hyped out of my mind, but I couldn't even read back then to understand what was going on. That is insane to think about. If it's the bag that I'm thinking about, I feel like that's such a 90s bag. Like it's not even like a man purse, it's just a 90s bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can imagine what a '90s bag would look like, but yeah, it's like what it's like when you would go to school and like those kids would have like the fucking over-the-shoulder strap bag that like has a flap on it, but like this one just didn't have a flap, just has a zipper. It was and you like just have it on one side, right? yeah. That you would carry like mail and stuff and like like uh, parcels and stuff. Yeah, like the old the old mailman's that would have like the bag that goes over one shoulder and then it comes out at the waist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. 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 One of those. But, like, this one didn't have the flap, obviously. It just has a zipper. It's in the shape of, like, the Game Boy, but a little bit bigger. That's still so sick. Oh, memories. Are... That was the best feeling so, that day. So, talking about hobbies that we're into, why don't we cut into some hobbies that we're into that aren't gaming? What, uh... What does each of us do for uh, hobbies outside of streaming and gaming? Alright. Well, I can start off. There's two big things that I do outside of streaming, gaming, and bartending. I rock climb, and I run cross country. So those are my two big things that I do, and I strongly enjoy them. For those who actually know or care, I actually prefer boulding, bouldering over top rope. And just because I just, oh, I love being able to dyno, and just the feeling of... I don't know, that latency in the air when you are trying to go for a dyno that's about 15 to 20 feet off the ground and you miss it. It's just, it's such a cool feeling to me just because if, if you miss, it's just all, it's so much fun to me. That just free fall back down and you're thinking, well, that didn't work. What's next? <laughs> it's such a fun feeling. With me, my my personal hobbies have become mythology and just different forms of digital art. I'm trying to learn to do digital art for Twitch, and that's that's a fun road. Like I'm creating emotes and stuff like that, uh, backgrounds, banners, designs, digital art. Uh, but what's that called? Uh, like art for advertisement. I forget what that's called. Oh, I graphic know. design. Yeah. yeah, yeah, graphic design. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for, I guess, for me personally, um, because I'm, like, a jack of all trade, and a lot of y'all that know me, you'll know that, like, if somebody shows me something, I'm gonna pick it up instantly, and kind of, like, a quick study like that, I dabble on way too many things, um, so, I, I guess most heavily for, like, my hobbies, music was a thing for a while, I did that for seven years, where I was in drumline for four years, jazz band for one, um, so I played jazz set, I had music theory for a year, that was, like, my biggest passion, I guess, outside of streaming, um, other things that I guess I dabble into is like lower level graphic design as well as um, digital art as well. I think some of y'all, maybe like six months ago, even like I think maybe two months ago as well, saw some of my like art streams. I don't do them very often, but when I do, they're just random at midnight. Um, I think that's really it. I create Discord servers as well and other things, Excel sheets, block, whatever, but. There's just like a whole bunch of random shit. I guess coaching as well for like different video games, esports. I've done, I think, Overwatch, League of Legends, and Valorant coaching. Um, so yeah, I guess whatever just like I see that just interests me and I'm like, hey, I want to try that. I just do it. 
is pretty cool. My friend tried to get me into rock climbing. I was like, no. Outside is not for me. I don't touch grass. <laughs> I'm telling you, grass is good for you. Grass is only good when we're going to the arcade. Oh, <laughs> uh, I accept. $200 on a Miku statue. Unfortunate. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, upset with myself. I didn't decide to go with you guys that day. Uh, I wish you would have. It was so much fun. We need to go again. Absolutely. Now we know the secret in the chip, so we can Once we figured out the going. secrets of the machines, we were just giving people stuff. Like, whenever they got close to it and they gave up, we would just go up behind them and just do it in one pull. And we would knock it in. They'd be like, oh my gosh, they knocked it in. And I'd turn around and be like, actually, this is for you. And, like, every single person was shocked as fuck. They were like, huh? Yeah. I was like, yeah, bro, I don't want this. <laughs> that was so much. What was the far left one? It was something from... Uh... Uh, Attack on the Titan, maybe? Yeah, was it... Le I think it was the Levi statue. It, it what was, was the Levi? Yeah, I it was the Levi statue, because I know we won you one, and then I yeah. went, I don't want one. And we ended up winning, like, three more that day, and I'm like, who wants a Levi? I think we gave away Gojo, too. Oh, yeah, that was on the other side, I think, right? Yeah, we gave away Gojo. Yeah, that's right. That's fucking right. That's it was so good though. I I love that mall and that arcade. It's so it's so much fun. I need to go back. They have like three anime shops in that mall too. We've gotten so many different things from the anime shop. Yeah, I know. Like I have a My Hero jacket that I got um the very first time that I went, I guess, with one of my exes. Um yeah. I needed the My Hero jacket because I was on my My Hero phase. <laughs> Not that I'll ever get you're off still, of it, but I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure you're still on that one. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I have too many I have like every C uh, C D up to season five episode one or not episode one but like part one and i'm missing like the third movie and then part two of season five because they just don't have those on cd yet that or they just don't have them in my walmart but yeah a lot of people are always just like hey what's your favorite uh tv show and i'm like i don't watch tv shows i only watch anime uh, that's a good question what's you guys favorite tv show uh, i I want to say the 100, dude. I I watched the 100. I wasn't expecting much going in. It was like this sci-fi outer space thing. Like, yeah. we sent people into outer space to survive the Earth that was dying. And now we're sending them back to the Earth. And it was just like a nightmare for them. That was a cool one. And I, I saw a couple. I think I saw the very first season. But I haven't really watch more than that but i know it's actually blown up into something awesome are either of you into cyberpunk oh of course okay so they just dropped cyberpunk earlier this morning uh not not on netflix yet i don't think it comes out until tomorrow yeah or like four hours from now for us but okay. like they showed the anime that they had made for it and it was phenomenal like, we only got to see the first three episodes on their actual uh, Twitch page this morning. But it was just the, the budget they put in for the animation was so smooth, so good. Ooh, let's hope it's good. There's just certain shows you really just hope hit the spot. So I'm not going to lie, this was a fun show that I, I didn't think it was the best, but I didn't think it was the worst at the same time. If you watched the Pacific Rim, The Black... I have not. I, the uh, only thing I've seen of Pacific Rim so far is just the first movie. I never got to see anything past that. I was going to say, I'd ignore the second movie, and I would go straight to the Pacific Rim, the black, because that was actually really enjoyable. Because, I mean, there's a couple aspects where they have to force a plot a little bit along the lines, but it was honestly something I just enjoyed watching and hanging out doing, because I just thought it was really well done. See, this is gonna be this is gonna be cringe, but I think I actually want to watch the second one because I heard that they had good CGI in it, just terrible is... story. Yeah, I was gonna say the fights were kind of cool, and the CGI was actually very very well done, like you were saying. But yeah, the story was just I, I didn't enjoy it. Like I'm a CGI junkie. I I love that stuff. I'm not a. I don't think I'm really a huge fan of CGI, to be honest. For me, like, especially trying to watch um, Ruby, when Ruby came out from Rooster Teeth, my friend was like, hey, you should watch yeah, this. That was, that was rough. And, like, at the very beginning, like, obviously, like, over time, their CGI got a lot better, especially as their company grew. And uh, yeah. that being, like, one, I think, their very first productions um, in, in the CGI phase, I had a very hard time watching it. And he's like, you just, you just have to keep watching it and get through, like, the first couple seasons. And yeah. in high school, I, especially in high school, like, I was very, yeah. like, I don't care how good a show is if they have bad art. Um, yep. 
it's something that I've always was... stuck to with anime. Is like if they have bad art style, if I don't like the art style, I'm not watching it. And that one I had to grind my teeth to get through it. <laughs> At least in the beginning. Um, I will say my first ever. I I watched Red versus Blue before I touched Ruby, and oh my god, was I just in madly in love with Red versus Blue? That was just funny though, especially because like the way they recorded oh, yeah. it is in game and like custom lobbies with the oh, game mechanics course. so it looks a thousand oh. times better than ruby but yeah oh that's why I, that's why i loved about it is because they that, that that whole entire branch of machinima like i i can think of about like 20 other machinimas that i have taken part of just trying to create something that was even a quarter as good as uh what hey uh, what uh red versus blue did and obviously never succeeded but i just had a blast doing that it was just something that was such an awesome job i shouldn't i shouldn't admit this but my first exposure to ruby was like secondhand videos that someone else had on like a flash drive kind of thing and they would show me this and i'm like what are you even want why don't you watch something better like red versus blue that's a better animation company <laughs> got me so angry it's just like it's the same animation company what are you talking about i'm just like no, no it's not you talking about your that that's trash that show is trash you should watch red versus blue because I was so misinformed back then. Like, I uh, didn't understand what a machinima was. That's hilarious, bro. And that's I thought so it was like the game developers or something, like, voicing uh, over their own game awkwardly. Yeah. And then I found out, oh no, it's just a bunch of randoms. That's they just, too funny. They just voiced over some random video game and then slowly became a part of the video game, which is where Griff Ball came from. Yep. Oh no, so, it's actually yeah. a parody. Fuck. Oh, here, so, uh, I'll take it from here. I, 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 I am both very proud of this and exceptionally disappointed in myself all at the same time. The very first night Halo 4 dropped, there was a huge tournament. And that was, like, massive across all of just like all the regions of the united states and it was whoever could get the most kills in the very first day of griff ball would get like a signed xbox i think it was 360 at the time and it was like the custom halo one signed by the voice actor of master chief and i can't stress this enough how late i stayed up playing trying to get good and enjoying myself killing other people's fun in the game I got 136 kills in one game of Griff Ball, and it was four off the winners. And Dang. I loathed myself because I have never, ever just shown that. That was probably like the apex gaming moment for me is knowing how, like, I at the time, I held the lead for maybe a good two hours until that guy just came up and snaked it. I was distraught. Because, I mean, I had been here. playing all day. I had breached 100. I had, like, there were so many things that you did to just beat, like, egg out another person in Griff Ball. Like, no one to use the energy sword. No one to slam on the hammer. No one just to absolutely destroy the enemy team. And even to this day, I still play. I was playing in Halo, uh, back Halo 5. Well, not that long ago, but still. Halo 5's Griff Ball. I... I still smashed it, even with like all the dodging and all the new mechanics and everything in between. Still smashed on Griff Ball. GG FF on install, yeah. get him a refund. That, that's pretty much what happened, dude. On it's like, so back on Halo Four, like I would be like even after that event, I wanted to play on a team because this would have been the time where you know like how they like it was literally for one episode. And it was less than 30 seconds in passing. They made a joke about the Griff Ball League. Mm -hmm. That started a Griff Ball League. So I was training. I got put on a team. I was playing in local conventions. And oh my god. I was... Had so much fun. And then my parents were like, Yeah, we're uh, a little concerned. How about we go to sports? I'm like, alright, you know what? That might be a good idea. <laughs> Why don't we go to sports? Something that might actually uh, produce something one day. Turn around. Uh, like, now you see like pro players making fucking three times the minimum wage. Uh, I'm sitting there like, thanks, mom. <laughs> now I'm gonna be an engineer. I could have been God. rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ! Ain't that the truth? Damn. Damn. Here's another topic to go into. Has there ever been a point in your life where your parents are just like, "Oh no, we need to take video games away from this one," or they're not gonna be a productive member of society? They're just gonna be like. 
the cyber bully. Oh, uh, okay. So I, 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 ooh, I've got a good story for this. So back in middle school, I started realizing that I'd barely have to try in school to just bare minimum, I'd be getting B's. If I tried like my pinky toe, I'd be getting A's. So I was very lazy through school, just getting B's and A's and very relaxed, very not very trying hard at all. And uh, so on top of that, I would, I, I'm like, and that, that was where it started. So bas basically in eighth grade, it was like the first time I ever got a B. And my mom was kind of worried. She's like, hey, uh, everything okay? Like, do we need to slow down on video games? I'm like, mom, I'm just, I'm just not setting myself in school. I'd rather just relax, enjoy myself through high school, hang out with friends, play video games, and just be a kid. My grades won't suffer, and I'll never drop below a B. But for like a month, my mom was like, how about we just not play video games until 2 a.m.? How about we go to bed at 10? I'm like, uh, it, it, it stabbed me in the heart. But it's okay, guys. Ryan is a cyber bully. That's that's what happened. That's the moral of the story, bro. <laughs> you gotta be because he's a bully. Moral, moral yeah. of the story. That, 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 that's my uh, that's my uh, that's my villain uh, origin story right there. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan is a cyber bully. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, Watch for me, Chelsea. like I, I <laughs> yeah, I wanted to touch grass, and they were like, "Uh, no, go play video games. We'll buy you another one." I was like, "Oh, all right, cool." So, no grass for me. But like m me, like I was always so quick to get my schoolwork done. Like it just came so easy to me, and like I would finish state tests in under an hour, get a perfect score, like math and science. Like it was just it was nothing to me. And my teacher was just like, we're not going to take this. You need to double check your work. There's no way you finished the state test in an hour. I was like, you're going to take it or I'm going to sleep on it. One of the two. So I took it. I walked away mad. I come back the next week. How did you get a perfect score? Pissed. Every year. Uh, Same thing. Over and over and over. So it was like, uh, for me, it was never concerned. They were like, I'm not going to take video games away. They tried to take band away because uh, I started dropping my grades and because band was eating so much time. But never, video games, never. See, with me, with me, since I was the older one, I was the experiment child. Um, they, they were just like, oh, we're gonna let this one touch grass, and they were just like, oh no, this one gets lost pretty frequently. This, this one will end up in someone's white van. We need to like distract them with something. So video games became a distraction, and then I, I heavily focused on video games where nothing else mattered, like tunnel vision. So they were just like, oh, this is unhealthy. And they tried taking that away from me, and I think they slowly realized when you took that away from me, I become disinterested in everything else around me, and I stopped learning. <laughs> like, way back then, way back then, I didn't realize, but like, I learned everything I know now, like, knowledge-wise, through video games and through video game, like, knowledge and experience. And like, my love for history, my love for science, my love for math, all of that stuff came from video games specifically. And when they took that away, it, it kind of like stunted a lot of that to where I wasn't learning in school. And then there was one day in third grade. In third grade, my uh, dad came into class just to check up on me to kind of sneak in and spook me, so to speak, as parents do when their kids aren't learning. And they, they ended up finding me on the computer, like playing a bunch of video games <laughs> on the school's computer. And the teacher's just like, yeah, I don't know what it was. The moment I just gave him a video game, he suddenly did all of his work correctly. <laughs> and it was just so weird. Oh, it's that's funny, crazy. bro. So yeah, all of my, like, learned talents, traits, dexterity points all came from video games. He's building his IRL skill trees using video game <laughs> skill trees. Ridiculous. Correct. Right. Next yeah, level. Pog. I chose the bard uh, class. Yeah. I will say I like this one. This one comment here. It's what did we yeah. grow up watching? Who did we grow up watching on YouTube, on Twitch, on whatever we grew up? Because, ooh, mm. I will. I can start and lead off if we want to. Because I had three major people that I watched. One was Rooster Teeth, and that yeah. was Rooster Teeth, Achievement Hunter, all of them bunched into one. I grew up watching them. I was pretty much there since like short of day one it, it, i watched the growth of uh red versus blue i loved being there another one i watched was captain sparkles if people know him he was a minecraft youtuber and i followed him back when he was pros don't talk shit 
That was such a long time ago, which is hilarious to think. But I used to watch him back when he played COD, and now he went to Minecraft, and that was something so wild to me. And my third is a bowl of fruit. If anyone knows who those three people are, like, absolutely add me instantly. We are now friends. I think for me, just... like, I I didn't really care to watch other people. I spent more time doing than watching. Um, it wasn't until, like, high school until I, like, I found out some of these people, like Markiplier or fucking, uh, mm. you know, um, I think I heard of Technoblade. I don't think I ever watched him. Oh, yeah. Um, unfortunately, what happened recently with him, too. Mm um and his family but for me like i spent more on time doing so it's like i if i like saw somebody do something irl i could pick up that trait and so i spent a lot more time watching my peers and and, and experimenting with all the different opportunities and things around me especially with like us having a free period now built into our school system where we could join any single club in the middle of the day because it was no longer after Ooh. school they built it That's in nice. so that students would have a chance to either hang out with friends or join a club or play basketball or whatever so that they would focus more in class um i spent time doing so as far as like watching people on youtube like i found out who like rooster teeth and all they were like those people were but it wasn't until i graduated high school that i started like sitting down and watching podcasts and and like yeah. discovering all these people and then that's when i actually became a streamer too because i was like this is kind of fun just watching people have podcasts and yeah. have, and, and and play games Relaxed, and yeah relax and just for have this you know stressful or stress-free atmosphere uh stressful yeah. atmosphere can you imagine that <laughs> of course i've worked in the going into the entertainment for... business and it's just like a stressful atmosphere like you're in the wrong you're in the wrong <laughs> business bro i feed off of that stuff i am like a vampire when it comes to that when it's like a stressful environment i get so excited because i'm like yes chaos slate is the and stress vampire the that, goes in that likes organizing all of that stuff like when i find a chaotic group of people i'm like okay you're useful in this category you're useful in that category but you're not doing it yet so i like redirecting those people that is fun he said om nom let me bite your neck and suck out your stress <laughs> Yum. Oh, that is oh. too funny. God, that is accurate, though. I can see it 100% sleep. Yeah, I'm kind of a Looney Tune like that. I respect it, dude. Yeah. I'm a Looney Tune about This week's prime moment is good. Slate the Stress Vampire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's the Stress Vampire. I'm just... Oh my gosh. There's Jeez. just no sleep to be had. There's just all... All logic and reasoning can go out the whim on, like, a dime. We can go from a great serious topic to, ooh, you know what just happened outside? I touched grass, and now I'm sick. See, with me, with me, I, like, whenever we have, like, mundane conversations, I go into, like, tunnel, tunnel vision mode, where I just zone out kind of thing until another topic jumps back in. Yeah. But, like, the moment drama happens, and it's not directly affecting me, <laughs> I become so interested and so fascinated on how things derailed that quickly and escalated that fast. Oh, and I've got, like, two modes. I'll either try to, like, simmer it down a little bit and find out how it got there, but, like, not, not fix the problem, yeah. or I'll pour gasoline on it just to see how far it'll go just for content. <laughs> You and your brother is so alike, and it pains me so that you both don't see it sometimes. No. Uh, I mean, gosh. it's not that we don't see it. Like, obviously, like we're gonna be alike. And the thing is, this right? Yeah. He he basically raised me because, like, I just like when it came to my parents, I just didn't care. Um, I was basically always following him around. So, like, everything I know about anime, everything I know about video games, like that all came from him. Um, so, like, to some extent, like we're gonna have the same habits. We're gonna have the same, you know personality traits this and that because i spent a lot of time just shadowing him um it, it wasn't until like i i, I kind of dipped off and i found my own avenue of of things that i kind of developed my own personality like different from him i'm probably a little bit more sassy or um you know and and my interest for music and other things like that's where that starts to develop but like a lot of like horse shit just came from from him you know what i mean so you know to you guys it's gonna look like we're probably pretty similar but to us like we know the differences um <sighs> that kind of make us unique and so for us like we fixate i guess so much on those differences that we forget the similarities a lot of times that's too funny yeah yeah but as someone who's lit, like mainly hung out with Locke and just known a lot of your mannerisms and what you do 
there's a lot you both have in common, but you definitely are two different two different people, which is fun to with, definitely fun to interact with. Hundred um, percent. So um, I guess we'll two more uh two more uh, I guess kind of topic areas before we. Uh, we kind of close this out. I'm going to take the one from chat. If you could join a friend group on YouTube or Twitch, which would you choose? Oh, Example, shit. boss, cruise, Mr. Beast, friend group, etc. I think I'll start with this one, actually. Um, me, personally, offline TV. They're so chill, so laid back. Um, their atmosphere, you know, they have, like, outdoor things that are fun, but I don't feel like anything is forceful. You know what I mean? Like, it's not over the top. It's relaxed. Mm. It's playful. It's chill. It'd be my environment, my groups of people, uh, yeah. my, you know, so I, I, I'd honestly feel like okay there. You know what I mean? If, if anywhere all at right. all. I know a lot of people are over the top. Couldn't be me. For I, me, I, I, I wish I knew the Trash Taste podcast people. I really love them just because they were all, they, they all started in anime in some regard. Like they all started as anime reviewers. And I used to watch a lot of anime reviewers like back in 2009 and stuff like that. And I, I started with Giguk and then I kind of like progressed over to Trash Tastes like slowly from him. But like every anime review, every show, every slice of life that I was getting into, right as it was coming out, he was the one keeping up on the news. So I was just like, I was really interested in his uh, personal life. And he meets like a bunch of interesting people. And that's why I would have liked to be into that uh, friend group. Because they go from like voice acting to knowing the actual actors to knowing artists to even knowing the questionable artists. <laughs> I still can't believe of how far animation's become. Can't, how far animation had to actually come because of uh, let's call them unsavory artists pushed it. I think that's a lot of pioneering too in a lot of different fields. This is really like unsavory is. people pushing ideas just to see where they'll go, and then oh, it, it becomes this beautiful blossom of just outward, you know, the spiral of just creativity that. It, gets improved over time by many people just passing it around. Yeah, that's so accurate. But that is so still what so friend group did you say you wanted to join, Ryan? All right, so this this one is probably known by plenty of people, but it was it was a sh it was the uh, series by Captain Sparkles called My Night, and sadly that group fell apart probably into its third season. But oh my gosh, those first two seasons were probably that that was like something I'd do every day. I'd watch the Twitch stream, I'd rewatch the full video, and then I'd just watch the highlighted video, and then I'd watch the heavily edited video. Like, I, I, that's what I would do while playing video games with friends, and we'd just talk about that and how fun that would have been to do. It was just something so cool, and oh, I wish I would have been in that. No, oh, sick. I actually lied to you guys. I'm going to add one more because, um, Cougar just reminded me of something that actually we talked about last night um, discussing. And um, it wasn't in the list that you sent me, but I'm glad that he put it in there because that's something that we talked about um, that we were going to discuss. Um, thoughts on the current state of video games or uh, video Ooh. game series? Um, I think we were also going to talk about the development of video games since we were yeah. kids to now. Yeah. I will say, from when I was a kid and just how much work, like, I, I can tell you the sharpest cutoff that I ever had in video games. Black Ops uh, 2 and Black Ops 3 to Black Ops 4. Black Ops 2 Zombies, revolutionary. What is an amazing storyline trying to grow out in a ginormous, intricate, extremely complex easter eggs they would truly take couple hours if not three to four to complete the easter egg finish it and the sense of accomplishment you got was immaculate then black ops 3 came along it tried to add a whole new series of people and i can't blame black ops 3 for trying to do that because that's when you know they had running on walls they went off from infinity war and everything like that so they're trying to keep up with the times yet still had a really cool spin on zombies and i think they did a really good job the easter eggs still intricate still complex still hard to do took people still days months hell i think there was one that almost took three months to come well, no i don't think it took that long but like at least three four weeks for a zombies easter egg to become fully completed and that was something that was so awesome then you compare that to today's zombies like 
Call of Duty, the new Call of Duty uh, Cold War, and how it took three and a half hours for the new Zombies Easter Egg to be completed. And how underwhelmed, like, and that's like from no one knowing any of the steps to figuring out the full Easter Egg to where the speed runs of the Easter Egg are like 25 minutes since. It just, ah, oh, it does not feel the same at all. Because it's I just, think... it's like it's such a sharp drop off on the hard work they put. Oh, definitely. I think for me, I guess over time, especially like the current state of video games and, and the previous state of video games and kind of video games as a whole, the biggest thing I focus on is graphics. Because like, like I said in TV shows, like if it doesn't look nice, I don't care. Um, yeah. Or at least like, you know, going up more, like I'm a little more lenient towards things. I understand how things are built now that things are really hard and all, they put a lot of effort into, you know, just creating things, even as an, like a solo animator, like trying to create fucking individual panels is a nightmare. Um, but as we get farther into, um, I guess current day video games and modern video games, we improve those graphics. Like a lot of the Easter eggs and the way that they yeah. hide things and the way that they make maps, um, and they construct everything, like the places that they have to put these things, um, the better the graphics get, the more the opportunity for um, those kind of things happens, especially with the hidden walls that we probably wouldn't have had in the very first, you know, um, Nintendo games or whatever. Like just having to like break walls and, and to find items or just things like that. Like mm-hmm. graphics is such a huge thing for Easter eggs. And like the farther we get down the line, especially, especially um, me uh, with glasses, like, you know, I put on a new pair of glasses and it's like the world is now in 4K. It's like whenever I look at something visual, I'm just like captivated because I'm just like, this looks better. Like for me personally, like whenever we just get better graphics, it just it captivates me a lot more. Um, and I think when I first actually joined the university, one of the things that they showed me was the computer labs that we have for um, video game design. I don't know if you remember that, yeah. Ryan. I do, um, I do. The study they were doing when I was a freshman was how I think they were working with the biomedical department um, and the computer science department were working together to figure out how um, to keep people immersed in the video game. Um, I don't remember what exactly they, they called it, um, but it was like this yeah. medical term that they had um, for like a state that you, that you hit. Um, it's like, yeah. you know, when you they hit realms. They were trying realms- to maximize the attention span on, uh, or the, uh, yeah, the, the, the so-called shelf life of a video game. It was a very cool. It well, it's like when you hit cool. rum sleep, you know, like when you're sleeping, yeah. like that that so, so you're talking premium about like point. A sword art online full dive kind of thing. I oh yeah, hundred like, percent. They had headgear already. 100%, yep. So they were trying to, you know, uh, you know, when you hit a loot box and somebody has like a, they they hit like a, a legendary item, and then you have that like release of like serotonin in your brain that just kind of like that makes the the moment like special or happy or immersive. They were trying to measure the immersion value of gamers um, inside of games and try to figure out how to stretch that as long as they can to keep somebody entertained um, inside the game. That is so dangerous. It's like constant dopamine. How do I get them addicted to video games? Yeah, basically. (laughs) Yeah, 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 basically. Um, You had to, I will say, we we had to sign many a release waivers to be able to go through that. Yeah. But it was... Oh my god, it was such a cool study. Well, those labs are and so I cool. Have... Oh, I know. I was such a happy lab rat. I mean, what? Yeah, and on top of the fact that they already had a fucking AI shit in there too, but we won't go into that. Oh, dude, that, that was so pretty. Their departments for video game research were beyond extensive. Like, there were so many labs. Mm-hmm. It was so great. But yeah, I know. Like, uh, video games have come really far from, you know. Yeah. Where they were to where they are now. The thing that got me into video games the most was the multiplayer playability. Like, Uh, I never liked playing video games by myself. I always liked uh, playing with other people or against other people. Like, I was super competitive with video games. And I wanted to feel like I was good at something, but it was... Like, it's, it's really toxic to admit this. When I was young, I wanted to, like, play a video game and then tell myself, I am better than my friends, thus making me better than everyone else kind of thing. And, like, over the years, over the years, like, the multiplayer playability of video games still dictates what video games I have. Like, if it has cross-console or cross-saves or all of that stuff, like, that didn't even exist way back when, all of that is important to me now. Like, the the ability to play co-op, the ability to play against your friends, the ability to beat your friends, the ability to play on your team and coordinate with your friends to beat random strangers and then trash-talk those random strangers, like, it has 
weight and bearing in life. All of that dictates how well the video game is for me. Oh, yeah. That I don't think that true. I uh, really got into um, multiplayer until after I had graduated high school. I think it was very heavily on like single player games, like solo games. Um, just because like, I didn't really care to interact with other people. Uh, I thought people were shallow and fake and I just didn't care. Like in high school, for me particularly, um, they had like the popular kids and they had all their different groups, you know, that you guys can, you know, like it's a, such a high school thing to just have different groups of different cliches, whatever. Um, I spent a lot of time alone because I just wanted to play my instrument. And, you know, like I think a group of like, you know, seven, eight girls pulled me out and, um, you know, we'd hang out or whatever. And um, so like a lot of people just like gave me things for free. Like I just got monsters or headphones or just had a shit in my lockers. Like I just had a lot of free shit that I didn't need. But none of those friendships, um, I think maybe only one or two of those friendships were like actual genuine real friendships now that I can think about. And I'd be like, that person, I still talk to them. Um, they're a really cool friend. Um, or this person, I still talk to them. They're a really cool friend. But I didn't only i think maybe two of those friendships that i actually have in high school even though we didn't talk much the rest of those friendships um anyone that i knew from high school that i'm still friends with now i didn't actually talk to or meet until after high school like my friend um ultimate toxin we uh we met in high school in uh, stem academy i guess and uh, like i didn't talk to him until college because i accidentally found him um through another group of friends online um, and then I was just like, why do you sound familiar? So we sent like, we exchanged selfies and it's like, oh, like I know you. And then we found out later, I'm going to be going to this college. So, you know, like a, a lot of like games for me, it was just solo. Cause I didn't have people to play with. I didn't care to socialize cause I just didn't have any friends. I was just like, meh. Now I'll interject here. Cause I will say some of the solo games are truly getting to just a, such an awesome point. Now I want to really get your hot take on do you like kind of this like so this is a good topic for me because i really liked it huge god of war fan and as people know the first three were very like they i wouldn't say linear is the perfect word for it but it was very progressed you always had your side missions and everything to do inside of them and they're always so much fun to play and go through but versus now where it's a very cool uh, a very cool open world a very immersive thing you can find lore you can find everything inside of it but i just want to ask what route did you like more and especially with single person video games taking over especially like you know with doom with uh like i just said before god of war especially with ragnarok on the rise assassin's creed coming back into the fold what take do you like would you like to see them play like a more linear a challenging approach or would you like that really cool open world or do you want a blend like what do you think on that i i don't think i want an open world and i, I think it's just because i'm getting more into the dark souls franchise i want to see more difficult games because Reaper, I feel like thanks for the follow where video games are still very rudimentary for people who have never played video games before oh, i agree but for the most part, most people have at least touched a video game or have an idea or concept of a video game to where a tutorial is necessary, but a tutorial shouldn't be like 90% of the game. I agree. But this I... is the thing. I'm sorry to interject here. Yeah, but it, so as Elden Ring showed, it, you can still do a very, very great job of um, what's the word I'm looking for of an open world, especially in Elden Ring compared to Dark Souls. Dark Souls is it's kind of linear you have plenty of options for side quests and then just a bunch of options from there so that's what i gotta ask is because open world can be done very well and but it can also be done very poorly so like, what would you like to see more of then comparatively besides difficulty because i think video games could definitely like start to actually take in a difficult sense make a very high skill gap and everything else I want a linear storytelling situation, and this is just personal for me. Mm -hmm. I want a linear storytelling situation where it tells me, okay, you have to go here. This is the objective. This is the point. Yeah, you can branch off and do a couple of story missions, side quests, travel a little bit, but the whole point is to get from A to B. 
like even with Legend of Zelda, how Breath of the Wild had came out, and it was just like, okay, your main objective is to go to Ganon's castle. Yeah. There are locations you can go to. You can go anywhere you want. Yeah. But you have to eventually get to Ganon's castle. I said okay. through it after like the first hour, went straight to Ganon's castle, and then just started learning how to fight <laughs> in Ganon's castle with absolutely nothing to assist me. And like that skill-based playing was really good. But because yeah. I dipped off and didn't do the world like world yeah. missions, I didn't figure out who anyone else around the world uh, was. You know, it hurt I, me so much. You just reminded me of something. You remember um, Kingdom Hearts Two, the the extra boss Sephiroth? Yeah. You remember how many hours that I poured into trying to beat this guy um, at level forty? And eventually, like you asked me if I could beat it on your your your, your file too, because you just didn't have time. So I went on your file and I beat it first at level seventy, because you had all your items and shit like that. And I went back to my file and I still like went back to beat him at level forty because I just didn't want any items. I didn't want any like power ups, any bonuses, any buffs. Like I wanted to beat him at the absolute lowest level that I can encounter this boss at. And the only way to like basically beat him at that level was to perfect block every single one of his blocks because otherwise he one shots you i just didn't have enough health um and, and i don't like using potions either um yeah. i absolutely hate using you know any healing items because i just I, like i just want to like hack and slash things like straight up so it was just like especially when uh, once you get to pass the first stage of the boss that the boss randomizes too um mm -hmm. it wasn't like i could just memorize every single block no it was just like i had to anticipate and i had to have the reaction time to genuinely get through the boss without having to um you know uh without having to heal or anything like that so for me personally like if i were to ever get back into solo games there has to be a skillful aspect and there has to be a competitive aspect um because the only thing that holds me in video games now is um being competitive with friends or just relaxing with friends um that's so point, yeah. if i you know if if i'm playing a solo game like i gotta have a leaderboard or something that's like worth uh competing in I see, I see. So here's something you may or may not know or have played a bit. So back in Titanfall, when back when Titanfall 2 first ever dropped, did you ever play it or not really? I don't think I remember hearing Titanfall. I copy. Well, Titanfall, in the beginning, there was this really dope course that you would, could practice speedrunning on and doing everything to, like, you were trying to run through this very specific course the fastest. And it got such a big take on it because it was challenging. Like, average person would probably spend about, I'd say about 50 seconds going through it. But there was so much de dedication to speedrunning that because Titanfall 2 was one of like the most fun games to speedrun because there's so many things you could do to improve your speed, to break the wall, to skip a boss fight, to do whatever. That so many people had field days playing Titanfall 2. This seems like kind of a game that I think you'd enjoy and might want to go back and eventually play. I might take a look at that. I think I've seen it in like magazines, but I don't remember like specifically like looking deep into it. I think I just kind of glanced at it. Um we are kind of running um, towards our the end of our, um, our our time allotment for this podcast, um, so I'm gonna um, end it on one last question. Um, how did you guys come up with your um, your online names? All right, well I can go first because mine's pretty simple. So uh, back in when I first got the, my Xbox One, well my Xbox pretty much the very first xbox that ever existed i generated a random name and it gave me edible venus 57 and for a long time when i was a kid i i, I knew we had one freebie and from there i had no i had no idea what other what other aspects there were to like actually changing it i didn't know if you could change it after that but, you know, I equate it to the, uh, the the feeling of, you know, when you get a super rare drop in a video game, and you're like, I can't change it because if I, I use it, I'll lose it forever. That's essentially what happened, is I, I have the ability to change my name, and at this point, it, it's too late. It's staying this forever. It might just get shortened. So a lot of times, if people see me on, uh, uh, like, well, consoles now, it's it gets shortened down to EV... SPC 57 is a lot of the times that I go by. 
which is just a very shortened version of what I like. So, so another question: If you've had, uh, I guess, all this time to change it, why uh, stick with it? Because uh, I, I know, like a lot of times, I've told you, "Hey, it sounds like something else." Especially like when <laughs> when people say it, they're they like yeah. double take and they're just like, "Hey, it sounds like edible." This word. Mm-hmm. Um, why we'll fill in the blank? Yeah, why stick with uh, Venus when you could uh, change, change maybe else? the maybe change the planet? Now, so this is this is a great question because a lot of times back th- this is mainly what ties back to when I would play daily. Back when Destiny One first ever dropped, I played way too much. I was like not even close to worlds first but i would i'd still finished the day one vog run and i think we our team came in like 80th place or some odd, some odd number but um people my call out was venus and so anytime people really knew me or anytime people got new gamer tags or they lost their xbox or they lost their account they they'd remember venus and so a lot of times they'd look me up, they'd try to find me, they'd make a joke to themselves, like, what was it? He was at a, he was eating something, right? And they'd remember me and look it up. I found one of my childhood friends less than, like, three months ago, because I still kept my name and he was able to look me up. So I'm like, now I almost don't want to go there, because what if someone comes back into my life, and that would be such an awesome thing to have. So I might stick with it, and I think I will. Yeah, sounds good. So, yeah. so with me, my my name is just one big meme. Uh, about shooting, it, it's been like twenty years now that I've had this name. It's it's kind of bad. The original reason I wanted a screen name was because I needed a screen name for like a video game website. I think it was like kidswb.com or something, something dead. And uh, I was in a Home Depot at the time. I was like walking through Home Depot with a manga in my hands. And that manga has now since been dead because they lost funding for it. But inside that manga that was poorly translated, it told you what the suffixes and the prefixes were for Japanese people because it was a Japanese manga. And inside of there, it had a poorly translated word, which was senpai. And I was just like, that sounds like a cool last name. So I kind of just stole it for myself, not knowing what the word meant like fully at that time or what the word was going to become over the years and then i looked like to my like i think it was right and the first thing to my right was a countertop that was like a grayish blue color that they called slate that wasn't even (laughs) slate colored and that's that's how i came up with slate and senpai together fast forward like the next 20 years uh everybody just called me senpai for a while and it it got kind of weird so the whole reason I didn't change my name, though, was literally the same reason as Ryan's. Like, so many people have found me just by calling me Slate or calling me Senpai that they just immediately find me still to this day. Oh, 100%. Like, if I log back onto my Xbox 360, I, I will still get a ping or two from people who I haven't played with in eight years. And they'll go, Venus, you, uh, you still alive? Mm-hmm. hit it off well. and just pick up right where we left off for me um i've changed my name over a thousand times because every time i changed my name slates made fun of me so <laughs> i was like all right bro like um what do you think sounds like a good name and he goes well you're into fps games so why don't you try auto lock um and it was or, lock on that i, I think it's lock on i think you gave me both though you gave me you said lock on i was like that doesn't i don't really know if i like that too much um, cause it just felt, it just felt like weak or weird or whatever. And he's like, you want to try auto lock? And I was like, no, that doesn't sound right either. Cause I think we were like something around like lock. And I was just like, um, why not lock shot? And I kind of like the way that that kind of, um, that like that rings and the way that it, you know, sounds, especially the SH sound just kind of with me in shot, it just felt smooth. Um, so I picked up lock shot mm, I think I'm just going to hold on to that now. Alrighty, well, this brings us to the end of our very first episode of Unlocked. Funny story, the name Unlocked was actually based off of me wanting to, um, I guess, unwind or disconnect from uh, video games. So Unlocked segment is actually going to be um, 
it might be primarily around um, podcasts, but you might find a week or two where we'll either do a Q and A or maybe we'll have a special Easter egg episode. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but that might not be for a while starting. Um, every week we'll try to rotate different guests. Um, so you guys might not always see Ryan or Slate, but they'll probably be regulars here. Um, so don't miss them just yet. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks Ryan and Slate for joining me today. And that concludes our first episode. Anything you guys would like to say before we uh, end stream here? It was a pleasure being here, and uh, well, uh, I'll be I'll be hanging around with you regardless. So we'll see you in the future and see what it holds. Yep. Thank you for inviting me, and I hope you guys all have a marvelous night. See you to the few folks who will be playing with us afterwards. Cheers, folks. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone, for watching the first episode of Unlocked. If you'd like to see these episodes stream live as they come out, follow twitch.tv slash lockshot. Second O is a zero. Thank you again.